Hey everyone, how's it going? Shuffles back here with another video, and we have another fight of the night for you in RTA Epic 7. Um, I was actually going to release the tier list tonight. It's already recorded and ready to go. But this is a good fight, and I didn't want to pass up on this one in favor of the tier list. That way we can release the tier list, tier list tomorrow. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So you can see we got back to Legend. Um, both me and the person we're facing, his name is Jinx, um, we both are already back in Legend. So uh, a lot of points on the line here early on in the season. It doesn't really matter all that much. But we go with the Tywin ban. He goes with the Lydica ban. I'm honestly not even sure if he has Tywin, but I think he does. Um, and either way, he knows I like to use Lydica. So we have faced each other many times. I lead off with my standard Alencia pick. He decides to counter with the Flurry. Um, Flurry is a unit that I really don't like facing, and I'm sure that he knows that by now. Uh, so he goes Flurry and Raz. Uh, the Raz is a little bit confusing for me. I'm not really sure what I want to do here. Because um, he can go... When you go two offensive tanks like that, he can go a lot of different directions. He could have really really fast gear on them and be ready to try and cleave you kind of or he could be playing more bruiser and have damage reduction on them and you're not really sure until the fight gets going and until you see who else he's going to pick so i decide to counter with two tanks of my own i go with the double cecilia um they're both built very tanky, but they also both have high crit rate. And obviously my Alencia does a ton of damage as well. Um, so damage-wise, I'm not overly worried at this point. I think we can get through it depending on what he brings. He decides to go with the DN, which brings a little bit of sustain and the attack buff now. So he now has two defense breaks, a team up, a provoke, and an attack buff. I know he has to go offensive here. Like he, at some point, he's going to have to bring damage, right? I, that's where I feel like we kind of threw him for a loop there. Um, and he decides, because I brought three AoE damage dealers that aren't pure nukers, he goes into the Dark Corvus. Um, that feels like it's a change of strategy over what he was planning on doing. Uh, but because we've gone so tanky... Um, and potentially with some resistance, he decides to go with the Corvus. So we counter with probably the best Corvus counter uh, in Spectre Tenebria. And then finally, we decide to go Queen Charlotte. So looking at this, obviously depending on his last pick, um, this is a strange last pick from him. He goes with Haste. I decide to leave the haste in because we don't have any revives. He's just using that as uh, ignore defense damage. He, we know at this point he has to ban our Spectre. There is no way he's leaving Spectre in because he has nothing that can even touch Spectre at all. Um, so because of that, we are pretty sure we're getting our LQC through. And we're going to take the LQC into the double dark damage dealers and hope we can sustain ourselves long enough. Uh, he does have a lot of sustain. With the DN's heal, the anti-crit, the shield, the cleanse, the Dark Corvus healing himself, the defense buff, the haste heals, the immunity, the more shields from him. There's a lot of sustain on his side, and all we have is damage reduction and a shield, as well as a defense buff and LQC's uh, scythe heal, and her skill 3 heal, of course. But nobody else has a heal. So he leads with his defense buff straight away, which makes sense. And then, of course, it's now his DN's turn. He doesn't want... Because his DN is faster than my... Or well, he's worried about... Because I didn't use my Alencia strip, he doesn't want to use his DN buffs. So he's got a decision to make. He decides to pass. Just uses the skill one. Happens to get a team up, but it's not a big team up. We try and provoke her. It doesn't work, unfortunately. I am trying to hold off on my AoEs as much as possible because I am aware this is going to be a long fight. And if we start using our AoEs, that Corvus is going to start getting turns with his uh, skill 3. And that is obviously not a good thing. 
I just say decide to break out her skill three right away. Uh, basically because I know I've got immunity and I probably won't be able to use it again for a while because I can't afford to get provoked. So I go ahead and use it on her, knowing that at least at this at this point he has to use his heals now. Um, it gives us a chance to kind of get rid of his cooldowns. We don't have to worry about them anymore. And we can go ahead and put up our own defense buff with the Alencia because we know he has to use his buffs. So he uses his haste heal. Goes ahead with the Corvus skill one. Doesn't really do much. It does bring us under 50%, which means it is prepped to proc scythe. We don't have our skill three, but at least we know we're going to get some bonus damage. He gets the strip with the Raz. And then here comes, I think, the buffs from the DN. Because he knows at this point he's got to protect himself because he's going to lose his defense buff here as well. Yep. So here comes the skill three from the DN. Right in time for our Lency to go and try and strip them off. And I remember saying when this fight happens, we only need one strip. If we can get one strip on any of the four, we should be okay. So her skill three goes off and we get precisely that. We get one strip. We get the strip on the haste and that means we're going for the haste now. Uh, I don't want to deal with anti-crit. We also happen to get a huge defense break there. Uh, his haste is apparently not overly high resistance, so we're definitely going for him now that we know that. We have the defense break and the provoke. We know she's got her cleanse. We're praying that the defense break stays up and he cleanse she cleanses the provoke. Unfortunately, we get we lose our coin flip there. A little bit unlucky. And he loses the defense break and then gets rid of his provoke on his own by using his skill one. And we're back to where we started. Um, it looked promising there, but got kind of screwed. And then he goes with the team up in and defense break into LQC, lands them both, and we give him another stack on his Corvus. And now we're kind of in trouble because that Corvus is only one crit away from getting to use his skill three. We do get another defense break and the LQC puts up immunity. Uh, we go ahead, provoke again. Now he has no cleanse anymore, which is really nice for the... Uh, the haste there. He does continue to hit the LQC, which doesn't really do anything. Can't even get through the shield. Uh, and she's going to self-heal anyway. He can't do enough damage really to kill her without the haste doing damage. Especially since she's on scythe and is going to self-heal. At this point, he doesn't really want to use the souls. You can see the hesitation there. He doesn't want to use the souls because he wants to be able to burn into the Corvus. Um... But I think he was close enough, and especially with all those team-ups, he's able to be pretty convinced that he's going to get back around by the time he gets his skill 3, because he knows I'm not going to hit the Corvus voluntarily. Uh, looking at this, we now one turn away from our skill 3, which is huge. Our, we, because we kept our defense break there, we're able to get rid of the haste, and now we know we have our defense break on our LQC, and we're ready to nuke at this point. Uh, unfortunately, we need to provoke this DN in order to get our skill 3 off on our Corvus. And this is where things get really tight. I try and go after her. We get a huge team up there doing a ton of damage. That's very lucky on our part because it does bring her down low. Unfortunately, she's got her skills ready. Um, and she's going to heal. He goes with the defense break. Tries to provoke, doesn't get that provoke there. That misprovoke is a kind of a key moment in this fight because that would have given the Corvus stacks and he would have been up next um, if he could have provoked there. So, of course, Dian heals. He's got another chance here, knowing that next turn he has his skill 3 and he's got souls saved. So he's good to go after this turn. Goes for the provoke, misses it again, but now his skill three is ready, and he's ready to delete somebody. He heals again with the DN, and we're up with the Alencia. You can see I thought about going into the Corvus there. I do end up going into the Corvus there. Um, no real reason, mainly because I know I'm screwed. Uh, and I decide, you know what, we're going to try and crit with our LQC in order to get this kill. We go with our skill three into a dark unit. 
sadly no crit wrong which is really unfortunate we lose a crap ton of damage there and we burned into it so basically we got nothing from our skill three there and he's ready to go uh, with his skill three so now with the cecilia strip which is new we can go with the strip we basically get nothing with the strip we strip the attack buff on the corvus of all things um probably the only debuff that didn't help us <laughs> which kind of sucks and we strip nothing else and then he goes ahead with a defense buff here another thing that's really bad for us and at this point we're looking like we're in big trouble uh we can however do this but he's gonna get a turn first if we do that uh, we, we do have our skill three from the Cecilia, or yeah, the FCC, but if we do it, you can see that Dan's going to get a turn and she's going to be able to get rid of the skill prevent. So we wait in the hopes that we can lap that Corvus and put up the skill prevent before he gets a turn. And it's going to be really close. You can see currently we're behind, but we are faster than him. He goes with the Raz. We're now up with the strip. So we can go ahead and try and strip with the Alencia. You can see his uh, Corvus was also on proof. We do get the strip on the Corvus, amazingly. We don't get it on the DN, who's the uh, one of the units we want to kill. We go ahead with the Cecilia, and we can see our FCC is actually ready to go with the skill prevent. So we would be able to block his skill three here. But instead, we get the Provoke, which was shocking. It kind of like changed my whole plan because I was all excited to get the FCC skill prevent up. Now, I'm not sure, though. I'm like, should I wait? He is up next anyway. So we go ahead. We skill one. We would have got resisted on that Provoke, but it would have been fine. We could have prevented, uh, even if we don't land the Provoke there, we could have prevented the skill three. He goes ahead and wastes his turn. We skill one with our LQC into him as well. He has no choice but to skill one with the DN, trying to get back around to his skills again. He really wants to get that crit resist up, um, but we desperately need to kill her. If we can kill her, then it's 4v2 versus the Corvus, and we're good to go. We don't get the defense break with the LQC. We don't get the defense break with the Fire Cecilia, and now we're on our Cecilia. Good to go. This is going to give us enough souls to burn into the LQC, uh, somebody said I should have burned into that, but that doesn't give more damage. Um, we just have to hope we crit the DN here and get the kill. We do get the kill right before her turn. That kill right before her turn means she can't put up the anti-crit buff. Uh, and our LQC has her skill three ready and we have enough souls to burn into it. So we take our LQC into the Dark Corvus, even though he's got Proof of Valor, it doesn't matter. Um, we're taking two turns plus the bonus dark damage. We get the kill and that is gonna wrap things up. Really crazy fight there versus the Dark Corvus. We had to play that really clutch and uh, really time our attacks perfectly so we can get that kill at the right moment and be able to take the DN down at the right moment and still have enough souls to be able to burn. Cause if we don't kill there, he just solos us uh, cause we really have no way to kill him after that. So it worked out really well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, the tier list will be out tomorrow. So if you don't want to miss that, make sure to not only like this video, but also hit that subscribe button as well. Uh, a whole bunch of you aren't subscribed. I was looking at the stats and uh, we can really get those sub numbers up. I do want to get up to at least 5K subscribers, hopefully by the end of the year. Um, so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you all tomorrow with the tier list. Bye for now, guys.